What's up everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to go through the Citibank Investment Banking Virtual Internship that's provided by Forage. These investment banking tasks have been requested pretty frequently so I decided that we're going to go back to them and take a look at this one. It looks like it starts off relatively simple and then as you go through the different tasks you get more into the weeds of the financial modeling and valuation. So I will try to provide as much background as possible as we go through these tasks. I won't go into too much detail but I think it might be helpful to explain sort of high level what bankers do. Effectively I would summarize it as they act as brokers between usually two parties, I guess it could be more, where one party is either trying to sell or buy a new company and the investment banker essentially works for one of those clients to uh, facilitate the transaction. And part of that is nailing down the valuation at which the company is going to be sold. A lot of the work is research. In terms of the actual output, it's effectively a PowerPoint slide with some detailed analysis on the company, the background, things of that nature. So the way task one here is laid out is effectively we're working for some kind of big box retailer that seems to be interested in acquiring a business. The business in this situation that they might be interested in acquiring is Best Buy. One of the first steps is sort of identifying this target uh, and getting some high level info together in, again, some type of PowerPoint or slide deck that will, in this case, be, you know, sent to the CEO or management of the big box retailer that might be interested in this target. So as I said, the very first task here is essentially to create this company profile page that will go to the MD and then that's going to be presented to the client. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention is generally in banking, a lot of this stuff that you're working on is client facing. And as a result, presentation is really important because you are being effectively paid for this. Uh, which is why there are so many revisions. It's not the only reason, but it's why people tend to work quite a bit in investment banking. They're kind of constantly on call for the client. So I, I, it's kind of funny. This is actually pretty on point. Uh, where they say that, you know, this is client facing, thus formatting and attention to detail is paramount. So I think this is actually pretty accurate. I thought, I, I think that's kind of uh, a good, a good thing they threw in here. So I just wanted to point it out to you guys. So here as well, we have some high level info on Best Buy, so we don't have to go, uh, go searching on Google for it, but that's effectively how we're going to be doing this research. Uh, so let's see if they've provided so here we have, uh, we get given effectively a template to pl plug these numbers in. Um, we have certain sections like the company overview. The enterprise value build is going to be uh, important, which I will show you how we can do that. And again, this is all just kind of looking on Google for these points. And then we can use these, these templates here. We have an earnings report uh, that is uh, their quarterly report and we might be able to find some additional financials from there. All right, so as we open up the target company profile skeleton, this is what we have. Now, I have already just pasted this in and I will explain uh, what we wanna do with that in a moment. But as I said before, we can effectively start plugging in the figures right here. Uh, we are given a lot of them, so let's do that very quickly. So we have revenue 51.3. All right, so there's that. Now, when it comes to this, I recommend plugging this into an Excel file. So I've already laid it out here for you guys, but effectively I recommend plugging it into here because you can do the cap share price is 80, 89. Shares outstanding was 225.5. Five, five. Great. And now for the short term debt, long term debt and cash equivalents, we can find that in the quarterly uh, data here. So this is our third quarter results. Uh, all that stuff, cash equivalents, the current portion of long term debt here is actually what is our short term debt. And the long term debt is obviously this line. This is all in the balance sheet.
And then the total enterprise value will simply be this uh, market cap plus short term debt plus long term debt minus, oops, yep, minus uh, cash and cash equivalents. Great. And then we can just use Alt HFP to take this and put that there. So it uh, ends up being a little bit more. Uh, now, the reason why we add back the debt and then subtract cash is if you think about it, when we're acquiring a business, the total enterprise value would actually be if we pay down all the debt possible and you know if we immediately use the cash that already exists in the company, that's why we subtract that and add this to the market cap to get the total enterprise value. All right, so once we have the numbers down here, we can copy them and take them to our PowerPoint slide deck. There we are, so once we're here, we can just uh, highlight these, paste them in, looking, uh, it doesn't look terrible. Uh, let's see, Scully bring Let's make these a little small maybe. Try to get them to match these guys. I guess we should make them an eight. All right, it's kind of small, but um, this is, you know, if when this is in a slide on a big screen, you're gonna be able to see it. So let's, these dollars, millions, millions, billions. Uh, okay, that looks pretty good. Um, now the next step is just to get the leadership team. Uh, I'm sure you guys are able to do this. So let me just quickly fast forward and see uh, what, names I find and then uh, let me just come back in a moment. All right, so I just did a similar thing in the Excel file. I just, sorry, I've copied them to get it all arranged now. And now one thing I wanna do is kind of keep it in line with all of these potentially. So let me do it like that. That looks pretty good. Uh, and now finally, like we're onto this business overview section. I'm gonna be honest, I basically just pasted uh, Best Buy into ChatGPT and I was like, hey, um, please give me a business overview. Uh, but basically what I would say is you're looking for three things here. You want to know uh, what these guys do, any products they sell, uh, kind of like the means by which they sell it and the end markets. So I'm trying to kind of hit on all these points and that's what I told chat to do. Um, but just that's just because I couldn't couldn't be bothered writing this myself. Uh, but yeah, just a quick little overview. If you can hit on those three, that's kind of gives you a pretty good overview of the company. So the last part of the PowerPoint that we need to fill out is basically figure out a summary for this annual paid subscription service that Best Buy, that Best Buy has released or was planning to release. There's a bit of a, a delay between when this task came out and when I'm actually doing it. So uh, I just searched this up and let's say this is like my Best Buy Plus program. This is the, the latest subscription type model that Best Buy has. You effectively want to hit on a couple points, you know, what this Best Buy Plus is, like assuming this is the latest announcement um, that they have for their subscription. So you just want to hit on what it is. You want to hit what it does to the revenue. Basically, you know, when we're talking about a subscription, it kind of increase could potentially increase the stickiness of customers. It provides from a financial standpoint, revenue visibility out into the future. It could uh, do a number of these things that I'm, I'm just going to list out. You know, I, I won't spend too much time on it, but you guys get the idea. Again, because this is client facing, uh, if you are very serious about this task, uh, you should do your best to, you know, maybe even include a graphic. So in my PowerPoint, uh, I'm going to add a couple bullet points to kind of highlight this, you know, latest announcement. I'm going to say something about recurring revenue stream, uh, how it provides some additional visibility, then customer loyalty and retention, uh, kind of in enhancing uh, maybe some competitive differentiation and provide some upselling and cross-selling opportunities as well. So pretty simple. Uh, and to me, this is kind of good enough. Like I said, this is client facing. 
So it's probably a good idea to spend a little bit of time on this to try and make it look better. But for the purposes of this, I, I think you guys get the point. And with that, that is it for task one of this Citibank Investment Banking virtual internship. Yeah, we're good to submit. Please let me know if you guys had any questions or follow-ups on what we did. In the next part, we're gonna be forecasting a financial statement. So I will try to point out anything in Excel that I think might be important. The reasoning behind some of the formatting, for example, in, in the financials that people generally use. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.